The diamond is paramount in achieving this vision as it represents a combination of factors that impact economic growth. These include endowments such as natural resources and human capital resources, macroeconomic, as well as social and political stability and infrastructure development. Microeconomic factors, namely quality of business environment, linkages, and sophistication of company operations and strategy are also components of the diamond of national competitiveness. Professor Williams notes, in achieving a goal, one has to know what it looks like and used Singapore as a benchmark. In 1965, like Antigua and Barbuda and many other countries, Singapore's per capita gross domestic product was low at 675 US dollars, which after 60 years has grown to 61,000 US dollars. Antigua and Barbuda's per capita GDP stands at 18,000. The comparison also showed secondary school graduates enrolling in university in Singapore is eight of every 10, while it stands at two of every 10 in this country. That's an area identified for development as the country's most important resource is its people. However, Professor Williams says there's a challenge. On the human factor side, we can all read the right, but in a global economy that is being powered by a fourth industrial revolution as we now speak. Reading and writing is necessary, but is not sufficient to move you forward. He says that the sophistication of customers is one very important condition in building an economic powerhouse. If you have a country that your consumers set before every and anything, forget it, you're not going to come to you. Your consumers have been demanding. What that does, Sir Roger, it allows you to you know, improve uh, innovate your processes and become much better. That's how innovation works. That's how competition works. And According to Professor Williams, studies show countries with demanding and sophisticated customers have firms that are competing globally. Professor Williams highlights one measure of that sophistication ties into post-secondary education. The truth is that at the primary and secondary level, you really produce only numerous and literate people. That's all you produce there. You don't really produce people who are physicists and economists and lawyers. You don't do that at the primary level. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. So if you're going to build an economy going forward, you have to upgrade the skills of the people. Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News.